beast inside and I'm waking it up. I got a beast inside and I'm waking it up. What the fuck? Hi, you guys. Welcome to Gay Area Podcast. The gays, the bays, first gay (laughs) stoner sibling podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Daniel here. Hi, everyone. Hi, your other host here, Allison. I almost said Daniel. And if you guys are wondering what that catchy new song was, I have to put you on top of the episode. Adina Menzel has released a banger. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. And um, it's for every single Cole, Spencer's, <laughs> Michael's, Ross. Yeah. Um, they Macy's, can't wait. Can't wait to, to play that this. on repeat. Can't wait to hear this while I'm changing. Okay. All jokes room. aside. People are being too rough on Miss Adele Dazim. I mean, we can't forget where she came from, guys. We cannot forget. You mean forget. Broadway? Yes. No, I just mean like. Or you mean can't... Elsa? Glee. I mean, like, we seriously cannot forget. But also, yes, Wicked, Rent, Glee. Um, She's an artist. And I think she needs to be respected a little bit more. And all these kids online on TikTok are making her feel bad. And. and- like she's it's, not just Elsa. I think she's just Elsa to them is the thing. You They're just, think? just yes, I think. They don't understand how well rounded she is. Like, hello. No, she's an absolute queen and people need to put some respect on her name and stream her new song, Beast. Do you know if gay people I feel like gay people are probably hating on it too though? Yeah, probably. I didn't say it was and straight I'm people. Cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. <laughs> She's going to claim us. No, the house but down we're, we're just trying to fucking get you out there, bitch. So if you do, you know, actually fuck you. <laughs> it's so fun. I got a beast inside and I'm waking it up. Okay, well, this podcast episode is not for Adina Menzel fans. It's actually for Barbenheimer fans. Whoa. Boom, 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 boom. Wish we had a bomb sound effect. But um, we Basically. survived. Basically, a, an atomic bomb. Oh, it's called boom. So if we survived the Barbenheimer event, the event of the season, we, the we summer. Did, we did it actually correctly too. You think so? There's a lot of people, you know, giving their thoughts and opinions on what order to see it in. Um, I just think the fact that we were able to see it in 70 millimeter is the the fact that we saw it correctly. Oh, that's what you mean. I thought yeah. you meant like the order. I mean, the order I could give or take, but honestly, I'm glad we saw Barbie second. Yeah, Low I key. mean, I don't know. It could have been nice to see Barbie first, and then, you know, already got the good stuff out of the way. Yeah, I see an argument for that too. But we we did Oppenheimer first, and ten forty um, a.m. Ten forty a.m. Apparently um, they don't. Apparently they don't have trailers. They now, start. They that said sh- because it's a three time. hour long movie. Yeah, so we are habitual late arrivers to movies. Always like at least five minutes. You know, probably uh, if it's me, it's going to be like at least 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes late because there's trailers. And I don't want to sit through. I've seen all the trailers. Even if you're going to get concessions, you're going to come 15, 20 minutes late. Well, no, that's if I'm not getting concessions and I know I'm just going to walk right in. If there's concessions, I might give more time, but I'm never there before the time ever. Yeah. And it frustrates me because I hate to miss. And in this case, it was a huge mistake. Yep. Because if it was up to me, we, we would, that wouldn't we walked, have happened. We walked in 15 minutes late. I remember checking my phone. We were about 15 minutes late when we walked in. I think in. it was like 20. Was it? I thought it was like 15. Mm. Let me check. I took a picture. That was after. This is the one we were walking. You see 10, 15, or 55. We were walking in. So, yeah, we were 15 minutes late. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, so it's probably. But, but as I forgot we were to walking mention, in. as we got our ticket scanned, the man was like, he was like, oh, there's no 20-minute trailers. And we were like, I was like, so has it already started? And he was like, what time does it start? I was like, and then I just walked away because I was like, girl, it started. I need to get in there. Um, and so, yeah, they didn't show trailers, so we missed a little bit of the beginning. But, I was you know, lost. I'm I'm sure I'll I'll watch it in parts on, on TikTok at some point. So I'll catch it there. Um. 
But yeah, as Allison mentioned, we got to see it in 70 millimeter IMAX, just as Christopher Nolan has intended. You're welcome. For our eyes and ears. And it was amazing. The screen was ginormous. It was unreal. The screen was was absolutely unreal. And we were like the, we were in D. So what is that? A, B, C, D. So we were like the fourth row back. And I still felt like we were like, pretty close but it wasn't like overwhelming i thought we had really good seats tbh yeah but even in the very back row it'd probably be perfect still you think i think like one row back from where we were and in the middle yeah would have been like bomb yeah a bunch of bombs um and this theater is special because there's only i think there's from the tiktoks i've seen there's only i think i thought it was 20 in in all of the u.s yeah okay that's what i remember in all of the u.s the Midwest, oh god, there's like barely. It's literally like uh, our coast. In, uh, in, yeah, in there's the like a bunch coast. in California, and then like the you West know, Coast on the east, you know, east coast, east coast. <laughs> uh, uh, and then a bunch uh. on the east coast, but in the middle, it's like slim pickings. I seen people who were like, "Oh, I drove five, four hundred miles to go to see it in seventy millimeter." I'm like, couldn't be us. We no, were couldn't only be like, us. I mean, it's not our regular theater. It was like the miles, the Dublin Hacienda. Miles. Which we lovingly refer to as the Hacienda. Yeah, it's like it's like twenty five minutes, but there's like no traffic. Yeah, which isn't bad at all. Um, although it did cost twenty five dollars each. Yeah, and it wasn't I'm trying a- to get a job there, so no longer that price. Yeah, but it was really impressive, and we were really worried because it said standard seating on the on the ticket. We were so scared. So we were like, oh my God, these are going to be like the most dutiest old chairs because at the AMC that we go to in Fremont, the IMAX theater, those chairs are standard seating as well. But they're like the really like old. Old plush rockers. Like not even plush rockers. I think they're just like. They are called plush rockers. They have like some plush to it, but like there's no know. leaning. There's like barely no leaning. They're, it's horrible. So I was prepared to, you know, sit three hours through this movie. Sit in horrible straight chairs. Up. Yeah. But we were actually pleasantly surprised, and they were very plush, and they were very rocking. It was amazing. It's like when you went to recline, the butt part extended forward more, like opened up. Yeah, like, I mean, they didn't like recline, recline. No, but the back went back. Like, yeah, a but you bit. could like push it back a little. Yeah. Um, and they were pretty big seats. I don't know. It was fabulous. I was like, this I, is. Yeah, I liked it. I will be returning to the Hacienda. I really liked the Hacienda. Um, but you didn't really like the film enough to stay awake, huh? Unfortunately, it did not captivate me enough, and I did not. She get needed more sleep. bombs. I needed more They were more building sleep the bomb the bomb. whole movie, and I was. It just took me so long to even get into it because when we first walked in, it was like, "Oh, here's Oppenheimer in class," and I'm like, "What? <laughs> what? No, no, no!" <laughs> Rewind the tapes, literally, please. please, God, no! I hate this. I know I hate. It takes going me so late. long to get into it because I'm not, you know, in it from the beginning. And no Nicole Kidman spiel. Yeah, I really just uh, really grinded my gears. But I know it was annoying having to like run in there too. I literally wanted to complain. Like, where on the website did it say there was going to be no twenty minute intermission, like uh, twenty minute like commercials? Yeah, he was like, it's a three hour long movie. There's no trailers. Like, you ever heard of Avatar: Way of Water? Yeah, I'm like, I'm pretty sure we sat through trailers. I mean, maybe different at the Hacienda. I guess it's different that Hacienda, they're trying to make their money. They they're living up to that name, Hussies. Yeah, they can't be having that long. You know, they're like, we need to get another I show. I guess, in. but the next showing wasn't until three. And it ended at like one, four, one, yeah. three. It was like almost I, two. Well, I mean, it is a huge, it is a pretty big theater. It was, yeah, it was a very large theater. But uh, honestly, not as big as like, like, I feel like they could sit, fit, fit more seats in there, low key. Like, it didn't look like it went back down much to me. Yeah. I know. It could have been bigger. Right? Compared to other IMAX theaters? Yeah, the IMAX one in, in Newark is, like... is bigger. Like, there's more seats. It holds a lot of people. It holds a lot more seats. Yeah. I mean, even think about their um, their 40X theaters there. A lot bigger. Like, the screen oh, isn't at, as big. At the Hussie. But the, at the Hussie. But they, the seating area is a lot bigger. So, you're farther away from the screen. But this, yeah. they don't let you get that far away from it. Like... In the way the seats were, were kind of interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Like the spacing was different. Yeah, Allison slept for about an hour. I would say during the whole movie. I mean, Maybe. off and on. Yeah, like she was asleep for a lot of it. I was fighting for it. 
But I probably not was, half. I would, was, I would, say, I would were, say I watched at least half. I would say you watched it. It was so sweaty and hot in there. I was getting so delusional, guys. I was just like, all I wanted to do was go sleep. I know. These hot summer nights are just killing us, especially for the Something's wrong theaters. with like, these theaters. They just Usually they need to be cranked to, up. To use the air conditioning. I'm like, please Think help. about it. Think about it. Like, the, remember? It used to be like, oh, it's a hot day. Let's go to the movies. You know, it's going to be nice I and know, cool. I know, and air conditioned. But not and anymore. now you got to bring your own personal fan or Dead placards. ass. Like I'm about to bring one of the like one of those little hand fan, like little like like stroller fans. I know. For real. It's so annoying when your back like gets all sweaty. Sweaty. And you're, like stuck. When to you the, get to up, you're seat. like fuck. <laughs> Literally, you're like this movie was good, but I feel disgusting. Yeah, exactly. It's like I gotta go shower. When we saw the last movie, we, we just saw Toy Story. I felt like it was. Cool. Like I didn't get sweaty. It's also because there wasn't that many people. Probably that too. Not probably when they're breathing. packed. It's like a lot of sweaty movement, worse. breathing. Ugh. God. Um. God, I hate it. I just wish. I just wish like they would just like get a little bit less cheap and just step up and turn the fucking AC down. I know. <laughs> when you start working there, you can. You can turn it down for I'm going to start advocating. I'd be like, yeah. oh, someone just asked me to turn it up in the theater, and no one did. <laughs> I mean, they're being greedy monsters. and Yeah. I mean, yeah, like you said, like, we go to the movie theaters to be in air conditioning. I mean, yeah, think about it. As a kid, like, I totally remember, like, Aunt Barbara saying that, or, like, people just, like, you know, like, family saying, like, oh, like, go to the theaters to get If it's hot, off. it's, like, yeah. hella, hella hot. yeah. Yeah, but don't go to the Hacienda. No, uh, AMC also just feel yeah. like no one's stepping up. Yeah. It was really hot at <laughs> Cinemark, too, and we saw theater camp. Oh, that's that was real. about to kill Caitlin. That was literally killing her. Ka- I was Caitlin hot, was like, really we were in there for like too. five minutes, and she was like, is it really hot in here? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was kind of fine. I wasn't too, too hot, but she was like dying. She was like, it's really fucking hot in here. And it never like got better. Um, but but um, anything else about Oppenheimer before we get to what happened afterwards? I don't think I have anything else to say. I I really enjoyed the film. I think it's one of Chris Nolan's best. Very beautiful shots, some great acting. Robert Downey Jr. was incredible. Oh yeah, not I the, was really not shocked. The, not the just Josh Peck spook. He had a very minimal part. I was like, why are we gonna even have him? It's like so distracting when he's like not a huge character. He's, he's just literally kind like of a just background there. character. The biggest part, I mean, this is it's not really a spoiler, but the biggest thing he does is is like detonates the bomb. Like he's in that room with Oppenheimer. But other than that, he's not really in it. Um Emily Blunt, great as always. She's my queen. She was just, Absolutely cr- she was just crying always. a lot and drinking a lot. So Allison can relate to her. Can we go get drinks and watch Devil Wears Prada after this? Mm, please. Maybe. <gasps> you think that's the move? Yeah, I think that could be really fun. I've just seen Devil Wears Prada so many times. I know, but think about how chic it is, though. Really. When she reads her down for the cerulean belt. It's, like, it's not turquoise. It's not lapis. It's cerulean. Girl, it's so iconic. Exactly. And then when Emily Blunt gets hit by the car and she can't go to Paris. Yep. God. But but that's in halfway slay. It's her slay. Um, yeah, so um if anything else comes back to us about the movie, we'll say um the explosion was really worth it. It was really exciting stuff. Really felt like a bomb went off. And you know, I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but you know, very historical if you're into history um i i would, i think you'd like they it it's all about too. a lot about world war ii and just you know if you like if you're into american history shut up oh my god ew um then you'd probably really like it wish there was more bombs and killian murphy I mean, is I just so wish sexy there was more like test bombs maybe I know the bombs they did test were so small. Wait, did you even see that part where you like put when they did test some, but they were like really small. Not sure. It's so severe my sleep apnea right now. Your sleep apnea? Yeah, I think I really. I don't know. I just wake up a lot in the middle of the night. I wake up a lot. So you think you should do a sleep study? Maybe another opinion. 
God. I got my tonsils out when I was like 15, 16 or something. I think maybe 16. 16, 16. Mm, yeah. And 16, yeah, I think so. It doesn't even matter. Got my tonsils out because I had sleep apnea. It was better. Now I don't know the team. Maybe my weight gain is causing some pressure. Yeah. She's yeah. pushing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because Caitlin is like been sleeping with you and God, she's she, worried she loves her fucking CPAP machine oh my god she plugs in for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours yeah she can really sleep with that machine and she don't get up <laughs> that could be you think about it I I would be there at Oppenheimer like wide awake if I was Caitlin's plugged in no literally you'd be so wide awake Wide awake. I found it. So, yeah, after that, we went home. No, 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 I'm calling, trying to call in Gosling you. Yes. No, I, 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 I very well might if this ever happens again. But I was scared for my life, you guys, after Oppenheimer. And it wasn't because of the bomb. We're in the lobby. Caitlin has to piss. Okay? So me and, Kate, me and Allison are just sit, standing there. Allison can't breathe. So obviously she's going to, she hits her port and ebb. And I'm pretty sure we've talked about this in the pot, but. I have this reoccurring joke when she's hitting her nebulizer when we're in the theater. I'll be like, ma'am, there's no vaping in here. Pretty sure I've said this before. I'm not sure. I'm sure. Well, Allison absolutely hates that. Well, because I've said many, many, asked him many, many times not to do it. So we're in the hallway. There's not that many people around, you know. Yes, the movies, there are. I mean, the movie's are exiting. People are leaving. Yeah, but it's not like we, it's not like right after the movie's done. And she's literally, she's literally nebulizing. So I say the joke, ma'am, there's no vaping in here. And then insert clip. It's not fucking funny. Ow. Why the fuck would you do that? Because you pissed me off. Damn. Ooh. It's not fucking funny. Ow. Oh, why the fuck would you do that? Can you guys even believe it? She put her hands on me, which I, okay, I was did so not, shocked uh, listen, and surprised at. I did not mean and to slap I'm him that hard. I'm scared to make jokes again. My death perception was off, and I slapped him harder than I thought I was going to. Your who perception? My death perception. And that's why I said, ooh. Death perception. Because I. that's why I did not. Depth perception. That's why I didn't know. I, I was like, oh, ooh, like, damn, I didn't know it was going to hurt that hard. But play, also, I play, was pissed. Play, play that video part where she says, ooh, again. But also, I was ooh. really fucking pissed because I don't know what to do. Like, I seriously, like, I, it's like, no yeah, matter how many Yeah, might as well resort to words, violence, huh? No, but you know sometimes, I'm for, like, like, I don't hit people, but, like, girl, like, I just wanted to slap you a little, and it didn't mean to hurt you that bad. Like, you frustrated me so, 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 so bad, and my words weren't working. But can you understand that it was a joke and that no one's paying attention and no one cares? Okay, I understand, but I care. Period. I just can't believe it triggered you so much that you felt you need to physically put your hands on me. I told you. Not I just another person, but your brother. Don't tell. Let me Listen. I'm telling you, I did not think it was I was gonna hit you that hard. It was an accident. Insert proof of the markings on it was my body. An accident. Insert. Accident. She left a mark, a big old handprint on my heart. It was an accident. Physically and emotionally, I felt that for the rest of the day. And every time I wanted to say a joke around Allison, I just hushed. And you know, maybe that's what she wanted in the end. But I hope you Feel bad and I, I do feel have bad. a very non-humorous life.
where no one jokes around you. I hope that for you. <laughs> what? There's a difference between not wanting any jokes and when you ask someone not to make a certain joke. You have asked me not to joke, period, before. I, and I've definitely asked you not to make that joke. Yeah, both are true. And I told her I won't make that joke ever again. Or probably any other ones. Unless it's here on the podcast with you guys. But Allison did apologize. I did. We drove home in silence. And I thought I was going to go home. We had to watch Drag Race. But we had to watch the finale of Drag Race. So um, moving on to that. The winner of All Stars 8, Jimbo the Clown. What do we think, you guys? I was not shocked. I'm sure mm-hmm. all, anyone watching was not shocked. And I don't think Candy was shocked either. Although, I thought she had a great... Um, the, her song was way better than Jimbo's, in my opinion. Her, like, the last song that they wrote for her, or wrote for both of them. Uh, yeah, but that's just writing. Well, also, she served better. I just thought it was just... Overall, it was You think she served better? I thought Jimbo served better. I thought Jimbo was fine. I just didn't care for the song. I'm like, I remember being born. Like, what about this is funny? And they just kept saying it. I remember being born. I'm like, what is, like, what's funny about this? You're like, I don't remember eating corn, but I remember being born. That was the best part. Yeah. I was like, okay, that's funny. But I love Leland. He's my man. He slays the house town boots, and I trust him. My toes, my toes are going numb. My hips, my thighs. Oh yeah, remember when Allison broke the chair at the end of uh, the episode with Caitlin? The one where severely unwell. And she's still just now. It's using making a, me more severely unwell. No, literally, she's using her a chair from a different part of the studio. Um, La La Re, winner of Fame Game Extravaganza. My question is, did they film all, however many girls there are, winning? Right. Or did they like only film a few? I'm confusion. Because maybe they only really filmed Jessica and Lala Ree, you think? I don't know. Because Lala's looks no, so also Lala's James. Was, Lala's seems so genuine. It's like how does she how do you fake it? Like she killed it. I voted for Lala Ree. I voted for Lala Ree and James, I think. Come on. Who did you vote for? All James. All James. I just thought Lala's performance was just so fucking fierce. It was really fierce. It's just like, I was so captivated. <laughs> I have these. Yeah, James was good too. Yeah, but Lala's, that was unreal with the legs thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Jimbo running, not surprised. Um. The, the, the video of him actually winning is so funny. Oh, it is really He's hilarious. He's like shaking. He's like, I couldn't imagine if he didn't win. <laughs> He's literally like... <laughs> It's because he knew he was going to win. I guess. I mean, yeah, but but why be so over the top? I don't know. <laughs> I know, right? Next to Candy, who's just like. I know, Candy's just literally just serving face. Like ready to get the. the, the <laughs> ready to be second place. Ready to lose gracefully. Yeah. I love Candy, though. She did a phenomenal job. Kind of wish Jessica was in the top. But that's how the cookie crumbles. I Aside know. from more drag race. I wish. I wish. Are you going to watch Down Under 3? When? Or 4? Is it 3 or 4? Uh, It's like in a few weeks. Is it Brooklyn Heights? No, Down Under. That's RuPaul does that one. Oh, nice. And Michelle. That's that's really unfair that the UK just doesn't get. No, the UK does. It's Canada that doesn't. Sorry, I'm like Canada. It's really severe that and Canada does ones. not get it. Or, yeah, or Spain or whatever. Well, yeah, the ones that are in different languages too. Uh, Lord, it's not fair. I know it's weird she does down under and I know, right? UK, but not Canada. But I love Brooklyn, so it don't matter. Also, Big Brother starts I'm in like a week, a week from Wednesday. Everyone's so mad it didn't start earlier, huh? Yeah, it normally starts earlier, but we've been and we've we've been waiting for a long time. Are you gonna watch? I've never really watched before, but maybe we'll watch it together. Yeah, because we're living together now. Yeah. Okay, so after. After we watched Drag Race, we drank a few claws, pounded a few claws, and watched then John and Kate Plus Eight. 
Oh, yeah. We watched some John and K plus eight. How to keep up with the drama, y'all. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about you that. You guys watched the special? Yeah. Have y'all watched the special? We watched it through you, Hulu, I think. Um, it's called uh, The Dark Side of the 2000s, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Who do you believe? Colin and his dad know. and Hannah or, or the Kate and Maddie and the rest of them. I mean, why wouldn't all the other six templates have a problem too? If, unless there was a reason. I mean, I understand obviously like Kate could have extremely like, like, uh, manipulated her. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Brainwashed them and stuff. But yeah. like, I don't know. Like, I know Maddie saying all this too and confirming it. Just I know like, Maddie and Kate saying this stuff about, about him Colin. being violent and them saying that he's still violent with Hannah and or Hannah and John John right now. I'm like, I know. I but don't know. I'd like to believe that maybe he isn't and maybe they're just blowing his little outburst like out of proportion. Like he still is growing up. I mean, he seemed hella calm in the interview. interview. I mean, yeah, but he could have been just trying to put on an extreme show because he really hates his fucking mom. And he's trying to look know. like this, like, really nice guy. I don't know. I mean, I believe that he had, like, anger issues probably and had, like, outbursts. But, yeah. I mean, Kate said that he used a weapon. I'm like, right. girl, a weapon could be anything. And she's probably blowing it out of proportion. I mean, I don't know. I'm just Team John. And. I know. But, like, I don't he know was saying, what like, to believe, but. I feel like I he was Colin. lying. I feel like he was lying when he was saying, John like. John was? No, Colin, when he was saying, like. Oh, like, I understand my mom was going through a divorce and all this pressure. I'm like, I feel like, I feel like if he was really, like, I feel like he'd be, like, not trying to make excuses for her low-key. Like, why is he saying that? And then Kate and Maddie to have this response that's so completely opposite. And he's, like, trying to be hella nice and being like, oh, they were going through stuff. Like, she just took her anger out on me. Like, you know, she was abusive. I know, maybe he sh- they should have tried to say all the bad stuff that Kate's done, like, go in a little That's harder. That's what I'm saying. Like, because we know, now knowing Maddie and Kate sure did. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I'm confused, like, how they're going in so hard, but he's, like, so, like, trying to be, like, understanding of it. I feel like maybe that's the, that the reason he is trying to put on such a good show like that is because maybe he knew they were going to respond like that. But why would Hannah want to live with him? And, like, be a part of, choose him over the rest of her siblings. Maybe she felt, if felt he's ostracized. Lying. Maybe she just felt ostracized. And as soon as she found out that what Kate did to Colin, she kind of just made a snap decision. You know, maybe she also didn't really feel, like, treated right. Do you think there's going to be more to the story revealed? I hope. I fucking hope. Like, come on. Fucking talk. Like, y'all are fucking. There's so many kids. Like Y'all are over 18 now. The fuck? Like, who's going to gossip? Come on. Who's going to spill the tea? Yeah, the fuck? Come on. I know. I want to know what Kara has to say. I know. We've been watching. That's like we're saying. We've been watching some of the show, and I want to watch more. (laughs) Because, like, that shit is entertaining. Yeah, we we grew up on John and K plus A. We yeah, TLC, were really baby. into that. Um, and the drama's just heating up right now, you guys. So if you haven't watched Dark Side of the Two Thousands and you're interested and you watched, um, I almost said Keeping Up, um, John and K John plus, and K plus A. A, then y'all should check it out. Um, so yeah, we watched some of that that day after Drag Race, and then we went to Barbie. We put on our pink shirts. Kate almost spending the night, so she didn't have. She was wearing her her Oppenheimer look, yeah, to Barbie, which is fine. I mean, Allison, we're wearing um, breast cancer awareness shirts, so that was good. Double whammy. Oh yeah, Caitlin was still asleep. Um, we got to this one on time because we were scared. We were like, "Well, what if this one's gonna be?" We still actually weren't on time. Actually, yeah, no, it looks like we were about thirteen minutes late. But by the time we got in there, it, there was we still saw like two or three trailers. So we went to Seven Eleven. Oh yeah, we went to Seven Eleven beforehand. Allison got a big bite. Insert clip of that. And some gummies. Some and gummies. Some hot fries. Oh my god, the hot fries were so good! I kept I being knew like, "We're gonna be so jealous." I kept asking for some. You were like, "You're gonna want to pass those over here." <laughs> I'm like, "You're gonna pass those to me, please." <laughs> Oh, that looks so fucking good. <laughs> we saw Nicole Kim in, don't worry. Um, and we saw Barbie after 
so long of waiting, it feels like. Like, I can't believe it actually is out. We actually saw it, and it was actually incredible. Yeah, it was actually really, really good. Um, there was definitely a moment or two where I was had some droopy eyes, but majority of the movie I definitely, definitely saw. Yeah, she never, like, it never fe- got lost. fell asleep. Yeah, or, like, She really closed her eyes in. a few times, but. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you do need a sleep study. Right? It's back to the more, it's back to it. Oh, God. Um, love the opening song. Love Margot Robbie. Love Greta Gerwig. I kind of hate Ken now. Ooh. I really loved Ryan Gosling in it. He's he was really great. I do I do kind of agree with the criticism that there's a little too much Ken. Yeah. In the Barbie movie. In the Barbie movie. I mean, I understand by the by the end when you kind of when it when everything kind of, you know, shakes itself out. You understand like more so like where Ken was coming from and it kind of is like all worth it. But the song, not Ken's song, but like the song they all sing and dance is just like a lot. And I kind of wanted more more Barbiness. But that was probably my only real criticism. Um love all of like how plastic everything looks looks. The set. So good. The props, just everything. And the costumes. Everything was so visually appe- appealing and like so beautiful to look at. Loved America Ferrera. Oh yeah. So good. And her daughter. Yeah, apparently she's from Stuck in the Middle, a D- a, a Disney Channel original show. Mm. How'd you like Will Ferrell? Oh, he was not in it very much, but he was the king. Yeah, he was definitely giving Will Ferrell. Yeah, absolutely, Will Ferrell. It was funny. It was really funny, though. It was really funny. Some good moments. Um, I would like to see it again. I would like to see it again, too. And I would also like to see um, Theater Camp again, which we need to talk about. Yeah, we'll get to that. Were you surprised by the ending? Um, Kind of, yeah. I, I was. I was, too. I was like, work, well, mama. I won't really get into too many spoilers because I'm sure some of you haven't seen it. I'm sure. And also, there's no need to spoil it. I mean, it's not like a super... Like, we have to get into it. Movie. Yeah, like, yeah, we're going to dissect it yeah, all. Yeah, exactly. We're just giving our overall thoughts and feelings of the film. I do kind of feel like I was, I don't know what I was expecting, but, like, overall, I kind of was, like, I wish there was, I don't know, like, nothing, like, pushed it over the edge for me. But I think that was my own fault, you know, just, like, I building mean, it up. hyped it up. So much in my head. So, you know, what is it going to be? Like, what's it? The second one better be better. You think there's going to be a second one? I hope. Lord, I hope, yes. I kind of felt like there was going to be. Yeah. By the ending. But I don't know. I don't feel like Greta Gerwig does sequels. Yeah, not really. But Mattel does. Yeah, she might pawn it off to someone else. Maybe. I don't know. I think it was good as just a solo thing, though. I don't think we need a second one. But I could see it happening. I mean, it was wildly successful. It's, It's been doing numbers, numbers, numbers. Um, I think it's like the best opening of any movie this year, I think, so far. Which makes sense. As the, she should. The PR was insane for this movie. Like, just everything they did, all of the collabs and marketing, it's just been really top notch. The Crocs? Girl, I need them. The drink at bar- bar- Burger King? Isn't, don't they have like a shake or something? Or. A burger or something? Uh, I know they had a burger for Spider-Verse. I'm pretty sure they did for Barbie, but it was, like, not as big. Aw, oh, rip. Um, Cold Stone? Oh, yeah. Just a lot. And it's I guess it's all been worth it. Yeah. All the music collabs with the celebrities. The album is so good. The album is pretty good. Um, Michael Sarah. So cute. When he's dancing in the in the musical number at the beginning, he's so sweet. He's just so cute. Wish there was a little bit more of him. I kind of feel like I I wish there was more of like all the Barbies and Kens, but yeah. I mean, you know, 
It's Shang Chi is pretty good in it a lot. Less than though. a two-hour movie, so yeah, Shang Chi's in it a lot, which That's a good I don't movie. really care for. Shang Chi. I loved that movie. I only seen it the one time. I can I, see it again. I enjoyed it. Um, who else was like a standout? Kate McKinnon, of course. When Kate she does McKinnon the splits. was so good. Amazing stuff. Fat, so funny. Fat Barbie. Slave me. Oh, yeah. Me. I know. I was really wondering. I was like, is there a fat Barbie? Because like, I don't I know, I, I didn't I, remember the, in the trailer. But besides her, though, she was, there was like, like not really any like medium sized ones, though. Yeah. It's like, it's good for us, but we could use a little more. More. Yeah. Also, were there any fat Kens? No. There was like one that was a little bit bigger. I think his name's Scott Evans. I was looking at the at that IMDb earlier. He's like a little bit bigger, but like none of them are fat. But I also are there fat Barbies and fat Kens? I don't think there's fat There is a fat Barbie. There is a fat Barbie. I don't know if there's a fat Ken though. But also who cares? I don't think girls need a f- <laughs> a fat Ken. I think it's more important to have a fat Barbie for sure. Yeah. Love all the different representation, the woman in the wheelchair, the fat Barbie, you mm. know, all the different races represented. Beautiful stuff. Greta Gerwig is just amazing at the details, and she's done it again. Yeah, it was very good. I don't know if I liked it more than her other films, though. Lady Bird's still really great, and so is Little Women. You see Little Women? Yeah. You like Little Women? Mm-hmm. Didn't Greta do Promising Young Women? Or no. My, no? Who did that? Um, Emerald Fennel. Damn. I'm pretty sure that's What else has Greta done? Just those. Well, she's done four. She did one, uh, but I forget what it's called. It's like not as big of, it's like not as well known. So just Lady Bird, Little Women in this. That's crazy. Yeah. And you know, she she's like married to Noah Baumbach, who's like a writer director too. And he I don't know who that fucker is. He um directed Francis Ha with her. Oh. Yeah. And and co wrote it with her. Oh, so she has her hand in that. Yeah. And so they both wrote this Barbie too. What? No, ew. Yeah, him Please don't and tell her. me that. Yeah, you don't like that? He's a great no, writer. I understand, but I only want women in this. Why are there men here? Ooh, maybe that's why the Ken storyline was so Probably, big. Probably. For real. And he like, took up a lot of It made time. me literally disgusted. He was really funny, though. Like, the part when... Okay, minor spoiler. The part when they're in the real world, and he's, like, finding out about the patriarchy. Like, it's so funny. And yeah. then when he goes back and he makes the the... What did he call it? I hated it. Casa Mojo Dojo Casa House. I was dead. That's when I was like. Oh, when they went back and and he had to kick it over. Yes, I hated it. Like, why do we even have to have this happen? Like, God. Like, it really don't make sense. You don't think? Couldn't things have fallen apart in a non. But I felt like it made sense for them to question, you know, to. To, to, for them to like, for once I know, he understood I just hate the patriarchy to come him. and introduce I hate it to him. the rest of them. But of course, he tried to do that. I know, but it, it ended up going back to being a matriarchy. Is that when it's? Yes, I think that's right. Um, when they became like back in charge. Spoiler, as it should be. Um, beautiful, beautiful movie, so fun, and we'll be watching it again. Okay, we need to talk about theater camp quickly. Um, we saw that the night before our Barbenheimer experience, so, so we're kind of going back in time. Good. Um, if you're unfamiliar, this is a movie directed by Molly Gordon, one of the leads. The girl from Chippa Baby. Directed by her. Co-directed. I did not know that. It's her directorial debut as well. Well, I fucking love that. I know. It's not great, and it's. I need to see it now. It's basically about a theater camp in upstate New York and their like camp um, founder is like in a coma. So they put on a show about her and her life. 
Her name's Joan. And uh, has Ben Platt, Noah Galvin. Oh, that guy from American Vandal. And the guy from... Jimmy Tatro. He's really good. The guy from um, Simi Valley Boys, whatever. Is that Simi Valley? Yes. Oh, I, I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, it's directed by Molly Gordon, Nick Lieberman, who's um, also helped create... Like, I think it's based on like a short film. I'm pretty sure. Well, it's just, it's just so fucking good. Yeah. It was hilarious. It, it was it, nonstop hilarious chuckle nation. It felt like it was created. I mean, obviously it's created for theater people. Hello. But it just yeah. like, it really felt so good to be like represented and, you know, have a movie so like, like this. Because, I mean, there's that movie camp with um, Anna Kendrick, but this is way better. I haven't even seen that. That sounds crazy. Oh, you haven't seen that? It's basically like, I mean, it's kind of like theater camp. But. This was everything. This was just, like, so fucking funny. And the kids were so talented. That kid from 13 was in it. That really big, big kid. What's his name? I think his name's Luke something. Um, He's a star. Ayo Edebiri from The Bear. I love her. This I girl. I love her. The girl who's, like, light on her resume. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's in The Bear. And she's going to be in Bottoms. Oh, yes, she is. She's with the main girl. Yeah. Love her. Um, oh, yeah. Amy Sedaris played Joan. So funny. The wo- the woman who owns the theater camp who was in a coma. Wish she, there was more of her. I totally, yes. <laughs> like, I know she was, I know. At the beginning, I was like, oh, my God, I love Amy Sedaris. I know. I was like, I love her. And then she gets in a coma. But her business partner or whatever. She's hilarious, she too. She was hilarious, too. I don't know her name. But um, this girl with the bangs. She was funny, too. Bailey. She was me, good. Bonic. Oh, so she fucking good. She was really good. Oh, and the kid from CMT. And, like, of course they had to find, like, good child actresses, act, actors, too, because, like, theater people, like, like this isn't a kid's movie. You're going to have kids in this movie. Like, you need it to be good. Like, you're having thespians come watch this. You can't have the kids being fucking, like, yeah. shitty. It's not like they're going to make it realistic and, like, yeah, try to have no. kids who are, like, not good. It's like, no, everyone's they a star. They need to be on. They everyone's need to be, yes. Good. They need to be really good. They need to be hilarious. They need to be, like, just good actors all around. Like, you need to be convincing. Uh, I think I read this before. The kid that I was talking about, the big kid, Luke Islam, he was also in 13. What about um, him? But he was, he did AGT, America's Got Talent. <gasps> oh, I love that. And he did She Used to Be Mine. That's probably where he got, like, found. Famous, yeah. yeah. I'm assuming. Um, so good. Highly recommend to anyone who's into theater. Go see it. Um, it's just, not like, to be missed. Go to San Francisco tomorrow. You think? Maybe just spend money on gas because honestly, we can't get it anywhere else. And then also, we saw Toy Story one in theaters today. Today, just earlier, and first time ever seeing in theaters. So that was really exciting. Disney's doing this thing where they're putting a. Oh, there's a bug. Um, doing this thing where they're putting, they're re-releasing old. I think they're all animated. No, um, one was live action. Which one's live action? Oh, uh, Pirates. Pirates. Um, they're putting them back in theaters. Okay, for the here celebrating Disney's 100th anniversary with a special engagement of eight classic films. You're invited to celebrate 100 years of movie magic with two week limited runs of featuring several di- Disney favorites. Get tickets now. So, so I'll, I'll tell you right now. Go for it. Pirates of Caribbean. The first one, whatever. Curse of Black Pearl. Yep. Was in theaters July 7th through the 27th. I saw it. And then Toy Story was in theaters July 21st through August 3rd. We just saw it. And then Frozen is going to be in theaters August 4th through August, 20, uh, August 17th. So we can go see that after hitting the bar. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, Beauty, Get drunk at Frozen. Yep. Pretty and the Beast is um, August 18th. I'll pass that one. August 18th to August 31st. I'll be there. And then The Incredibles is September 1st to September 14th. That's going to be everything. And then Coco is September 15th to 28th. I'll be there. And then Lion King, September 29th to October 12th. I'll probably be there. And then Mona, October 13th to the 26th. Absolutely. We'll be seeing Moana. Maybe many times. 
Yeah, I need to see that on the screen. I don't think I saw that in the movie theaters when it came out last time. I don't know why. I just I remember I saw it in the drive-in. So I will be myself. seeing Frozen. I will probably be seeing Beauty and the Beast. I will be seeing The Incredibles. I'll see. Incredibles. I will be seeing Coco. I will be seeing Mona. I might see Lion King. You know, never seen it in theaters, so it might be cool. Same with The Incredibles. Haven't seen it in theaters. Same with Beauty and the Beast. Haven't seen it in I theaters. I mean, yeah. If we haven't hit like three that week. Right, like minus minus, minus well. well, hello, because they count they count as our A-Litzer. one of our a lister reservations. Yeah, and so now we're going to transition into our trivia portion of the evening. <laughs> um, get your thinking caps on because Allison is going to be answering some questions. You guys can follow along, see if you know these answers. Um, you'll probably only know them if you've seen Barbie and or Oppenheimer. Actually, not all of them. You might know them either way. Let's. Get into it. Allison, your first question today is, what is Oppenheimer's first name? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Charles? Robert. Fuck. Fuck. His name's Robert. What is the name of the pregnant doll in Barbie? Marge. No, it's Midge. Midge. You were close. Well, that's really close. And fun fact, that's played... By the woman who directed Promising a Woman. That's hilarious. Remember the one with the blowjobs? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Midge. Uh, fun fact, my cousin Abigail had that doll. I love that. She did, I remember. she still has it? Maybe, probably not. Too bad. What was the name of the town in New Mexico where Oppenheimer's project was? Ooh, yes. It was like... Like Los Altos. <gasps> Very close. Los Alamo. <gasps> yeah. I mean, it's Lo- Los Alamos. Los Alamos. I would give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. Why did founder Ruth Handler name the doll Barbie? Because her name is Barbara. Why did founder Ruth Handler name the doll Barbie? Because she wanted to name the doll Barbara, and so she named it Barbie for short. No, there actually was a reason. She said it in the movie? Um, I'm pretty sure. Skip. Uh, uh. It was her daughter's name. Oh. And her da- her son's name, can you guess what his name is? Barbara. <laughs> no. Bob. No. Barbara. The boy. Yeah. What's his name, you think? Barbara. Bob. Mm. Bobenheimer. Think about the movie. Robert. Mattel. Ken. Hell yeah. But why would they love entrances, though? Why would their names be Ken and Barbie? That's what I was thinking. That's sick. I know. I'm like, so you named your kids after, you named the dolls after your kids who the dolls are supposed to be in love. Hmm. That's kind of weird. Sounds a little Southern to me. Okay. What kind of doctor was Oppenheimer? What? He was a, what kind of doctor? He probably had a PhD in like, um, like biophysics or something. Close. Um, maybe physics. Very close, but no. What? He's a physicist. Physicist. That's the same fucking thing. (laughs) I don't think so. Okay. Which of these artists are not featured on the Barbie soundtrack? Oh, ha, ha, ha. Shit. The Kid Leroy, Kim Petras, Sam Smith, or Lizzo? Sam Smith. Is that a final answer? No, Corey Leroy. Final answer? Yeah. No, the answer is Kim Petras. Oh, shit. Sam Lizzo and Leroy are on it. Lizzo sings the opening song. It's I knew fabulous. that. It's pink. Okay. Named after a large U.S. city, what was the name of the project Oppenheimer was in charge of? L.A. No. So it was a blank project. Uh, 
A no clue. Nevada Project. No. Think a little more Eastern. New York Project. New Hampshire Project. New York Project. New Jersey Project. Think of a city. Manhattan Project. Yes! <laughs> Period, bitch. Girl, it was in there, in there somewhere. I knew it. Barbie opens with a parody of a very famous film. What is that film? It starts with a parody of a very famous film? Yes. Charlie and Chocolate Factory? <laughs> no. You know, you know, like in the trailer? A Planet of the Apes. No. Well, which Planet of the Apes? Rise of the Planet of the Apes. No. The original Planet of the Apes. No. What is it? It's actually from 2001, A Space Odyssey. I have no clue. But it is like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, kind of. How so? The big, the big crazy, like, projection of the doll and, like, when things just appear in there. It's kind of like that one scene where they p- get put chocolate. Uh. Give chocolate to those people in an area very similar to that when he's, like, scrolling through the TV screens, you know? Hmm. And you thought Greta Gerwig was referencing Charlie in the Chocolate Factory with Maybe. with, with, with Maybe. Johnny Depp. Maybe. What was the name of Emily Blunt's character in Oppenheimer? Ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, shit. Come on, queen. Use your brain. Patty. No, but you got the double T right. I knew it. (laughs) Betty? No. The name of an animal. What? (laughs) Teddy? Bear? (laughs) Emily Blunt's name is... (laughs) Two T animal word. Yes, I give up. Squeeze that brain together. I, I give up. Uh-huh. Kitty. Oh, what did I say? Patty. Mm, okay. And then, and then you said, um, <laughs> what was the other one you said? I don't know. It was not correct. Which animated Barbie film is my favorite? The newest one. What? I said animated. Oh. Like of the Barbie movies, the Mermaid Barmaid b- Mermaid Barbie <sighs> one. No, that's very close. I like that one a lot. The two sister ones. No, the the one like you're just like me. You're just like yeah, me. that one. Living. The two no. sisters. No. Okay. Um. Let me guess. The fairy one. No, you've guessed too many times. My favorite animated Barbie film has to be Rapunzel. Oh. Uh, it's just my most watched. Yeah, I'm not saying it's the best. But I used to love that one a lot. Okay. Do you have a favorite animated Probably Barbie? either the fairy one or the original mermaid one. Yeah, I love that one. I love when Puffle goes yes. on the water. He's my king. He's my king, too. What controversial party was Oppenheimer accused of being a member of? The communist. Yes! Pick that up. <laughs> now your next question. What is communism? Ah, uh, I think it's what the the uh, Germans Hitler used. Hitler was a communist, maybe. Okay. So is um communist? It's not. I don't know, really. Yeah, I don't know either. I think yeah. We'll learn about that on the one about communism one day. Yeah. It'll happen. Who plays Mermaid Barbie in the film? Ah, oh, shit. Oh, it's John Cena. No, that's the male Barbie. Or the male mermaid, I should say. The merman. Well, I got it. What? I just got it, though. No, the Barbie mermaid. I don't know. You don't know who plays her? No. I can't remember. Dance, dance the night away. Dua Lipa? 
Yeah, girl. It was Dula Peep? Yeah, you didn't know that? The fuck? No. Yes. She's the mermaid Barbie. Oh, my God. What? Yeah. That is so funny. Okay. Final question. What Japanese city was the atomic bomb dropped on? Uh, Kasima? Or Kazuma? Cause, I, I think it's know. two cities. I, I'm only looking for one of them. What the fuck? Kazuma? Kazima? Oh, that's what it is. Okay. No, the correct answer is Hiroshima or Hiroshima. Close. And the other one, Nagasaki. Ah, damn it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got some of them right. I did. You were paying attention a little bit. A little bit. And that's that's really powerful stuff. Yeah. Um. Okay, well, anything else that our viewers need to know that we missed? Um, no, I don't think so. Checking my phone really quick, you guys. See if there's anything we missed. Um, Allison did a beer bong pong bong the other day. Oh, lots of them. So that was pretty exciting. Insert some videos of that. We also did some karaoke. Oh, we have some cute pictures of us in the Barbie, um, the Barbie box with me, Caitlin, and Al. Mm-hmm. Oh, and Tommy, actually. Insert that. Oh, I went to the beach. How was that? I don't think we talked about it. Me and you? Oh, no, we did talk about it on the pod. Did you? Because we, reco- we recorded after it. Hmm. Because they went Saturday. Whatever you say, queen. And then we did this be on Sunday, so I already talked about it. Yeah. Yeah, no, nothing. Weren't we recording last week? We were going to go see after we went and saw um, fucking. We were going to go see something. Mission drunk. Impossible. Oh, yeah. Ah, we had to leave early, guys. <laughs> Poots, the big oots. We Lame. left after after our drunken spelling bee. We went and saw Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part One, and I was living for it in the beginning. Um, and then Allison just got hot and texted me. She said, "Let's go." Yep. I was like, um, because she was like falling asleep. That too. And I was like, okay, fine, because I was kind of drunk. I'm like, let's just get out of here, and that we did. So we'll never know what we missed in the last hour of a Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. But maybe we'll catch it on TikTok. They love to put movies on there. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We love you. But this is for New York. 100. <laughs> oh, God. Also, if you guys want to join our Patreon, we we should plug it. We should plug it always. Please go join our Patreon. Come join our Patreon. You'll get smoke session bonus episodes. There's some other vlogs on there that we have that no one else can see. And sometimes we post upload early sometimes. Yes. So we can. come join us over there if, you, if you're needing more content of us. We love you guys. Or if you just want to support us financially. Oh, yeah. If you want to keep this gay area party a pumping. Even though we over. haven't even dipped into that once. So that'll be exciting. Oh, yeah. We're going to, we haven't dipped into our money. So we're going we're gonna to dip into it one day. And it's going to be in a really big extravaganza moment. And you're going to want to be on the Patreon for that. I'm sure. I actually might need Maybe to some crab cash legs that out involved. soon. Ooh. What are you going to be using on? That could really slay me. Anything? On what? Jeters. Oh, God. No, not Jeter's. We love you guys. Bye. Bye.